Duckless mini splits are becoming a very popular choice these days. And the number one failure on ductless units are bad flares creating leaks in the system. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my process on how I flare refrigerant lines to get a tight, leak-free system. Let's do some work. Let's do some work. Do some work. <laughs> Hey, my name is Zach Desjardins, and on this channel, I like to make videos on installation, service, and maintenance when it comes to heating and air conditioning systems. So if that's something you're into, consider hitting that subscribe button. Now, when it comes to making a proper flare, the process is absolutely crucial. All right, so the first thing that I like to do is inspect the pipe before I even start anything. So I wanna make sure that it's perfectly round, there's no kinks, there's no debris inside the pipe or anything like that. So that's the first step that I like to do. Now, once I've got the copper cut to length, and I'm ready to make my flare. The first thing we need to do is deburr the inside of that pipe. Now what happens when you use your tubing cutters and you're cutting that pipe, as it's going around the pipe, it's actually rolling over the copper. So if you look at the end of the copper, you'll see where you'll get this burr going to the inside of the pipe. We need to remove that before we actually flare it. So you can get you a nice deburring tool to make a couple different styles. So whenever I'm deburring any pipe, I always wanna make sure that the orientation of the pipe is angled downwards, not upwards. So that way the shavings that you are removing don't fall down into the copper, all right? That's gonna cause a lot of problems. We don't want that. So I always like to angle the pipe downwards a little bit if all possible. Then you wanna grab your nuts because you wanna make sure you put those on before you flare or else you'll be just cutting that flare right off to start all over. Now the tool that I like to use is this Navac battery powered flaring tool. This thing is awesome. So you grab these fittings, uh, we have three eighths and quarter, and you just stick that on, put it directly onto the tool. This makes flaring super simple and precise. So you're, I'm gonna get a perfect flare every time with this. I've had zero issues once I went over to this tool. So what I do is I'll just check it, make sure everything is good after I've got the flare, inspect it, and go on to the next one. And it has a little stopper, as you can see there, so you can't push the pipe in too far. So it's pretty fail-proof. You stick that jaw on there, stick your tool on, onto the jaw, lock it down, click the button, and it goes through its cycle. It takes probably about 10 or 15 seconds to go through, and that's it. You remove it, check your flare again. I like to make sure there's no little shards of copper sticking off, and that's pretty much it. All right, so now that you've got your copper flared, everything's looking good, the next step is to get it prepped and ready to be secured to the valves and torqued down to spec. So what I like to do is just straighten out the copper, make sure it's all good, the nuts are sliding properly, and go ahead and grab some nylog, and that's gonna be some gasket and thread sealer. So I put a dab on the back of the flare and a dab on the threads itself. And wipe that around, make sure you got a good coat around it. You don't wanna put too much on this, just a little bit goes a long way. Once you've got the nylog on the back side of the flares and on the threads, nice and evenly, it's time to put the copper to the fittings. So I like to go ahead and hand thread the nuts all the way on just to make sure there's no cross threading and everything meets up nice and square. And once you have the nuts all the way seated, I like to wiggle the pipe just a little bit because that's gonna make sure it's nice and snug. So after you've got the nuts hand tightened, the next step is to torque the nuts down. Now this is a very important step in the process because you don't wanna over tighten them or under tighten them because either way can create a leak in the system. The torque wrench kit that I like to use is made by JB and it's a spanner type head. It's very nice to get in these little tight situations and you just wanna make sure you torque it down with a backup wrench to the manufacturer spec. All right, now that you got your fittings torqued down to spec, the next step in this process is to pressurize. You wanna make sure you have no leaks before you go into the vacuum process. So what I like to do is pressurize to 500 PSI and use a digital manifold. What that's gonna do is give me a very precise measurement. So and what's cool about my manifold is it has a built-in timer. So I'll time it out for about 15 minutes at 500 PSI. As long as I don't have any leaks, you're good to go. At this point, you can pull out your soap bubbles. You can spray the fittings down if you wanted to just to get that secondary visual. But I feel pretty confident with this digital gauge and at 500 PSI that I'm leak free. Well, that's gonna complete this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit that thumbs up if you did. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about this process and what tools that I use. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Until next time, see you guys later.